turn go, your mic. Go, and we're mic. live. Let's did, go. Did you turn your mic on? Yeah, dude. Okay. And we're live. Let's go. You are fucking blowing it up right now, dude. You suck so bad. Do you got any more duckies in your pocket? You got any more fucking, any more cannons you need to pull out there, fucking mask? You're over here doing your hair like a goddamn girl for the first hour. Come on, let's go. Let's, podcast number what? 14. 14, let's go. Freedom Renegade. Freedom All Renegade. right, here we go. Freedom Renegade Radio, baby. Oh, no. Podcast number 14. Podcast number 14, let's go, son. How yeah. you doing, man? I'm fantastic, dude. You're always fantastic. You look fantastic. I'm doing good, man. Your skin's glowing. I know. I love I getting know. stuff in the mail like what we just got. That was kind of cool, actually. I love when people send us fucking Uh-oh. free stuff to use. Hold that. Did you spill it? No. I'm just turning. Oh, okay. Because I need to turn towards you a little bit, you know? We'll restart. No, it's fine. It's fine. I just need to turn my ch- ch- chair a little bit. We kind of want to start with a hot note. Though. Okay, cool. All right. What up? One, two, three. Freedom, Freedom Renegade, Renegade Radio. Let's go. Dude, Chris, your skin is glowing, dude. Bro, you for look real? Good. Dude, you, you think good. so? It's because I just got uh, some of that lotion from Sandra. That was nice. I Ooh. love when we get free stuff in the mail, dude. It's yeah. The best. Dude, seriously. <laughs> it's the best. It really is. It's I love nice. when people send us their products and get let us try them. I use that stuff from Chris the Vixens when I take a bath. Mm. I use that shit all the time. Yeah. Yeah. I'm fucking rub it on. Exfoliate. Bro, how cool was it that freaking Michael Franzese added us on uh, Instagram? That's definitely one of the people you're like, that's notable. And so did, but so did Wayne Brady, like last week. That's true. Wayne Brady had liked a bunch of our stuff, but never followed us. I was watching Let's Make a Deal at Work. It's good, huh? No, it's, it's, yes, it is good. It's funny. He does a great job, but I was watching it. I'm like, oh shit, this guy follows me on fucking Instagram. That's fucking cool, dude. It's wild. Yeah, watching him, like he knows me. Yeah. He, He knows who I am. Not just knows us, he's liked like 10 of our videos he didn't like us for a long, or didn't follow us for a long time. Now suddenly he followed us. That was dope. Yeah, as a regular person in the world, and we start seeing some, things like that, it just happen. It's weird. Josh Wolf. just far, being a farm boy. Yeah, growing up farm boy, and then fucking starting rapping, and then having people like that follow you online. It, the very it, it, that alone is just cool, you know. Yeah, just how I don't know, like Josh Wolf following us. That was a big deal for me because I really like his comedy. Like Josh Wolf is amazing to me. Like. As a comedian, one of the top comedians, he's funny, good guy. See him on bunches of podcasts, and then to have him just like follow us one day, I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah, and that Josh was, Wolf. That's bro. one of the people I wouldn't even have known. I'd been like, oh, this guy's got like 480 thousand followers, but I have yeah. no idea who the fuck he is. He's a huge comedian. I saw him in Boise when he came. Me and Trav went. That's a one. That is fucking. I don't know. I love seeing that people with like 1.2 million followers, like yeah. shit, like that lady yeah. the other day. Yeah. Like, who is this? Yeah, I want to give a shout out to uh, Brenna who watches our podcast every week. Thank you. We really appreciate you. Carly, too. Thank you for watching it every week. Um, there's a couple of people that always comment in our comment section. Brenda got me stoked today. She commented on the one we watched or we did last week with the Trump one. And uh, I don't know, gave me a little inspiration, you know, like even when it's low views, I love that she's like, I watch every episode. I look forward to it every week. And I, really? I love that. You know, I appreciate that shit. It is nice to have people that care about what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. That, that really helps to give you motivation. Yeah. Oh, and that, I wish I had that. It, wanted, it takes me to the subject of the book I've been reading a lot. And I've been reading The Subtle Art of Not Giving a Fuck. Um, and it talked about that, like not going, doing motivation. There was like a sequence of motivation, action, and something else. And it was like saying, um, it reversed the rules of it. Uh, I wish I could remember what it was, but it wanted me to, it moves me into what I was reading about with, uh, and I wanted to talk about expectation on here and what it talks about with expectation and how, you know, like one example it gave was there was a guy that was in a band that um, got kicked. So these, he, they just got, his band just got signed and they were about to, you know, fucking make it big or whatever, or at least get signed. And the day that they were going to like do the recording of their first day signed, their bandmates came to them and kicked them out of the band. They were like, fuck you. You may have heard the story. People may have heard the story, but they kicked him out of the band and he was just pissed. He was like, and he got it in and he's like, I'm going to go start a new band. Fuck these guys. I'm going to be, and I'm going to make them regret this shit for the rest of their lives. And I'm going to make an extraordinary band. So he goes and puts a band together and he does just that. 
they get signed and uh, they're fucking, they turn into an enormous band. They go and they're mega death. Um, but the other band that kicked them Nirvana. out. Nirvana. Was it? Metallica. Metallica. Yes, dude. And this guy was like, and in the book it was saying this guy sold like 25 million albums. Or Was this guy a soldier too? I saw a guy on Joe Rogan that had the same story. But I th he was either from Metallica or Nirvana. And yeah, anyways, go ahead. I honestly don't know, but um, but it was just giving this as the example. But the guy sold like 25 million albums and he th all he can think about is how Metallica sold like 100 million or whatever. It was oh, like, that's sad. It was 25 million dollars or 25 million something and they did like 125 or 187 million of whatever and all and he all it's really sad like he's very he's like a depressed person and i've heard one of my best friends dads told me one time he's a successful guy and he told me he's like i know a bunch of people with plenty of me that are millionaires that are totally miserable yep it's not a measure of your happiness but the way you you look at things with your expectation will influence that happiness going into it. You know, like this guy with Megadeth, he fucking had a totally successful career, extremely successful. But the way he's looking at it is through the wrong lens and it's making him depressed, you know? Yeah. And I would even say that like that expectation is really a comparison more so than like his expectation is rooted in like comparing that he's not where those guys are, but really you know that old quote of like comparison is the thief of joy that really is true because like not only is your life great as far as like you did everything you set out to do it was just like the other band is doing better so all you can do is think about them but you're doing great you know like it's crazy to see what how deeply rooted comparison gets stuck in people because from a very young age in school people are always comparing themselves as they get older they're perfectly successful their life is great and all they can do is think about oh, well, that person has more instead of just like, you're right here on your path going the direction you're going right where you're supposed to be and you're fucking, you're sad that you're where you are and you're doing great. And that's because their their value is off in the situation. You know, the, like that's the comparison. They're, they're, they're comparing themselves because their value in their, out, in their outlook is skewed. You know what I mean? And that also goes to um, the character thing from the awareness book that I was reading from Osho. Yeah. Like people are doing things out of character yeah. rather than out of awareness, you know, mm -hmm. and they're holding themselves in this past moment of this reference of what they think everything should be rooted in, which puts them in a box with character, but rather than just being aware of every, of being aware of life and in the mo and present in the moment and making decisions from that awareness. Yeah. It's also funny too, that like life is offering in every moment, even when you're going through struggles like that, where you're comparing yourself, life is offering you the opportunity to see out of it, but you don't recognize the friction happening in you with your own awareness. So the friction's happening and life's like, hey, you can see right now, if you pay attention, this friction's not good for you and it has a path out, but you never take it. You just keep doing the same thing. It's like, it's insane. You know, it's literal, literal insanity. It's trying to teach you too. All, at gonna, all times. And it's going to continuously, like it's like, brings, goes back to that saying, life's going to continuously bring the same challenges in front of you until you overcome them or answer them in a different way. But think about Because the, it's trying to teach you. If you think about the other side of it, had they recognized right now that problem in one second, it could be gone. Just seeing it, just seeing it, it's gone. Like, I feel like people don't really realize that's in the possibilities for them to stop comparing themselves. I do it with myself all the time. If I catch myself being like, oh man, this person's doing better than me. Like, I'll just catch myself and be like, this isn't helping you. That, it's like, there's another side of this and you don't have to keep going down this path and you can change it. A lot of people don't realize the path is malleable. When you have that thought, it's, rev it's like a revelation in, in, of the spirit because it shows, like the way I think about it is that it shows that that, if you can think it, you can achieve. You can and believe it. You can achieve it. You can bring it into reality. So when you have that thought and it, that and your spirit like lights up from it, you're like I could change this all right now, like right now in yeah. one instant. Yeah. You know, then it's like freeing to the spirit. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's like I went down a rabbit hole in my own mind here of just like it's hard to. I don't even know if I could put this in words, but the fact that you're referencing the past means you're not even enjoying where you are. The fact that you're thinking about somebody else and other things that have gone on or even thinking about the future of where you're going, you're like taking away from right now. It's like it is such an art to learn how to get out of your mind and into just right here where you are. And right here, there's no problems. 
And that, you know? that you, puts you in flow state and uh, a vibrational frequency that is matching of like the universe. Yeah, and I, I hate the loaded terms of like uh, live in the moment, be in the present. But like, when you do live in the... It's, 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 I hate those terms because they're so loaded with everybody's saying them now, but nobody really does it. But just because it's said all the time doesn't mean there's not like a huge amount of truth in it, you yeah. know? But when you do live in the present, it does like change your frequency in terms of the way that you're putting off you mm -hmm. know like the energy you're putting out you're totally like free in the moment well and the the mind only works in two ways it thinks about the future and it thinks about the past it contemplates ideas but all of it if you're using your mind at all you're out of the moment the, the mind takes you places it's not right here yeah you know so it's like the trap of trying to get out of your mind, the harder you try to get out of the mind, the more you get in your mind. Yeah. And so like meditative practices, that's where things like this come into to play because all you can do to stop the mind is not try to stop it and just watch it without, and just watch it without any insistence on what it's doing. If you can watch it and you're conscious of it, it slows down. If you're trying, if you're being like, I don't want it to, I don't like this thought. It keeps going. If you're like, I do like this thought, it keeps going. It's just like if you can watch it with no, with a detached like awareness that brings like a consciousness to it and it slows down on its own. You know what I'm saying? I do. Yeah. yeah. I'll do those sometimes. But that's why I like the ones, the meditations I'll do of like the 369 method combined mm -hmm. with the Joe Dispenza one because it's like a manifestation method of putting yourself, seeing the light, basically living, being in the future, but being in it now as if it's the present. Mm hmm. You know what I mean? So it's like yeah. bringing that as the present, but you're still, you're living like you were saying, don't live in the future because you're out of the now, but you're doing that as if it is the now and you're seeing your life exactly how you would foresee it. You yeah. Know? Like in the Tao, they explain it really well of like, if you're thinking in the future, you're feeling anxiety. If you're thinking in the past, you're, th you're feeling depressed. And so like just noticing those two things can bring you right back, yeah. you know? I think it's amazing that how your body doesn't know, like if you're meditating and you're doing the practices I'm doing, your body doesn't know the difference between what you're seeing and experiencing in your meditation or like in this very moment. Like if I grab these keys and fucking look at them and see how they make me feel and then to close my eyes and meditate and think about exactly how I want my life to be and feel how that feels. My body doesn't know that difference. Yeah. Yeah. I guess you could dive into that pretty deep. I'm sure it does subtly, but I understand, I do understand what you mean. No, they say it doesn't like, they I know say, they, say they say it, say it doesn't. It I'm doesn't thinking about it. Like if you feel those same feelings that it would like exact how that would feel in whatever circumstance you put yourself in, mm -hmm. in a meditative state, then your body, they say scientifically it doesn't know the difference. Like your brain doesn't know. Well, your body is, it's all one organism. So your body's aware of what your mind's doing. So like it's feeling it's, if you're imagining feeling as good as you possibly can, then yeah, your body's going to respond to that. But it's like, yeah, I don't care to break that down. I, I understand. I wish I, knew, I, I wish I knew about more about science or had someone that had the science. Yeah. Like, no, I understand know. what you're saying. And I, I think there's a lot of validity to what you're saying. I'm not trying to, discount it uh i'm just thinking about it in a little bit underneath i don't, I don't care to break that part down but i, I feel what you're saying because it's valuable yeah i get you yeah. and uh, let me just say that shit's scientifically proven okay, okay. all right yeah okay don't check me okay scientists check me on my own podcast bud i wasn't checking you i know uh you wait you we had some other shit you want to talk about too oh there's a million things we could talk about i think it's cool that we got a the album release coming up i'm so excited we got all our friends invited they're all coming we're gonna get busy uh on the, this weekend saturday this podcast won't even be out so actually be the last saturday by the time you see Hopefully this we got a good show yeah we bought two new uh wireless mics yeah i'm so stoked about getting these wireless mics i've been wanting them for Fucking like and talk me into it i didn't talk you into it actually you talked yourself out of it and then when i showed up with it you talked yourself into it i didn't want to spend money yeah. anyway go on go that's on that's why yeah. our merch you're is pumped. empty right you're now <laughs> you're definitely pumped on it yeah but i am i'm so excited i've wanted wireless mics for like for since the beginning you know since the first time we touched wireless mics 
I was like, ooh, we're, our show's so much better when we can move around. We got some nice A lot ones. of people stand around on stage. We run all, run all through the stage. We got, I got a girl from work that's going to be there filming us, too. Oh, really? That girl that does the videos? Yeah. She cool. Said she, she's like, do you guys move? She asked me that, too, exactly. She's like, do you guys just, like, stand around or do you move on there? I'm like, oh, we move. We're everywhere. She's like, that's good. That's what I want. I don't want you guys. To, I want people just standing Sitting around. I'm like, still. oh, we move. Yeah, on that note of, like, technology, dude, I saw, you know, I've always wondered how this doesn't exist. AI just made it a thing. So let's say we make a song, right? And I, it's got the beat and all the, all the vocals, all in, when I bounce that song out and I send it to someone, like you could take a song from the radio, record it, put it in this AI program, and it will separate your vocals from the beat because it's all one file. You can't do that right now. AI is, now has a way for the vocals to be separated and the beat to be separate. So now you can get acapellas from anything. Anything? Anything, bro. Do you understand what that what I'm meaning by yeah, that? Yeah, you can separate all songs and like yeah. samples. Yeah, it's uh, like honestly, dude, it's it's insane to me that they've found a way to do this. There's also an AI program now too. I just found that people are going to be sampling everything they ever wanted. You you, it's kind of putting studio producers completely out of commission as far as masters because there's another program that when you're done with your mix, you run it through an AI master program. It shows you what you can fix or just gives you the mix completely mastered. Instantly. How does it show you what you can fix? Because it, it'll run through whatever program. It's just a plug-in. You use it. So and they do, and you send like, it to oh, the plug-in. Yeah, it'll send it to the plug-in, show you all the ups and downs, places that you could, like, there'll, there'll probably be a hundred different presets within it that, like, do you so want you the vocals So you could take your high? masters, send it to that, and be like, okay, tell me what I need to fix. Yeah, it'll, it'll give you. And you could listen to both sets and be like, I like this. I like mine better anyways. Yeah, it'll give you, like, a hundred different presets of, like, maybe you want it to sound more rock. Maybe you want it to sound more pop. Maybe you want the vocals really uh, high and crisp. It will give you whatever you select. How much is this program? I have no idea. Dude, I just I just saw it the other day, and I was like, holy shit. Already, bro. dude. Since I've been out holy of prison, shit. even all this AI shit is just going, pew, 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 pew. Like, it's popping up left and right, dude. You can't even, it's like insane how much this shit has fucking popped up since I've been gone. Yeah, now there's, now there's an AI. One year, dude. Now there's an AI lawyer. You can go into it and it like whatever wherever you live, it knows the laws because it's AI. It can it already has a database of everything. Instantly, you ask it questions, it can give you answers to defend cases. I love that. It's crazy, bro. It's putting We're, people out of commission. It's putting dude. everything out, dude. It's amazing. Even, even music, like it hasn't hit us as hard, I don't think. But like artists, like drawing artists, we use it for that. Yeah, we do. Whether you think we're the only ones, like, yeah. but musically, I think people are still. They, like, There's some really good AIs people. out there. I know, I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, but I think people are consuming human art still when yeah. it comes to music. Of course, and they're going to want to support people always. But uh, as far as songs go, you know. And there will come a, a fucking niche where people are like, I want original con content. Of course. Or, like, or original um, work. But what, if you're a record label, what's the need for an artist when you can make AI music and make money off of it. Yeah, like it'd be like gorillas more well, amplified. Exactly, dude. There's amplified no amplified gorillas, dude. Yeah. That could be like an that could be like a fucking like a band, dude. The yeah. Amplified gorillas. Yeah. Because it's like total AI. Yeah. Here's something that people didn't see coming here. This is a uh, slight go ahead. Um I patent that. Yeah. Uh no one saw this coming. Biden stepped down from being president. Did you see this? And and tr yes, and and Trump got shot. And, yeah, we talked about that on the last podcast. That was the whole podcast. Was it really? Yeah. I forget every podcast. Go on though. <laughs> it's crazy. He stepped down too because uh, I don't even know how this part of it works. But uh, you know, it sounds like Kamal is going to be the person that's going to be. Does it sound like that? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Apparently, from what I've heard, is the easiest way to not have any red tape for transferring the money that was supposed to go to Biden for his campaign to. The next person, the easiest way to has not to be the per, per it doesn't have to be. It's just the easiest way to transfer it. So uh, apparently, Kamal is the person, you know. And which, from what you know, what's actually interesting, I saw the my bookie odds on who's supposed to win. Trump still minus three hundred, but Biden was like plus seven hundred, so he was the underdog by seven to one odds. Now Kamal is like three to one, and Trump's three to one favorite. So what's so that? Oh no plus? no. She's, she's she's two plus, to one. She's plus three hundred. She's a two, she's a she's a plus two hundred. Okay. And he's a plus or a minus three hundred. So the odds got a little closer, which surprised me. It doesn't I, surprise me, dude. People really? Were, no. 
People, Joe Biden's shit in his pants, dude. Yeah, dude. Have you heard the conspiracy that he's dead? That Biden died? Apparently, there's a big, a huge population of people that think uh, Biden, he got really sick and got COVID. You heard this like a week ago or two weeks How ago? How long ago he got COVID? Like two weeks ago or something. Oh. He got really, really sick. And, and his, he spoke out. After he came out on that letter from what these conspiracy, I didn't check this, but what conspiracy people are saying is that uh, like Biden didn't sign the letter. There wasn't like documented, like he wasn't like, he's not actually like saying I'm, I, I dropped out in the note it is, but they're saying like, it wasn't like notarized or signed signature. by him or something. I can't remember. So they're like, now they're speculating like he might've died. He actually might've got, and so has, has he come out and talked at all since the happening? No. no. Only so they might say he died after his stepping down. Yeah, they maybe. Could, they could frame it a bunch I mean, I feel like if ways. he died, though, right, like it still is they the next just, person up, right? Yeah, they would just say Camilla's the president. Yeah. You know, she's going to run. Oh. But they did. But in that letter, he said, I'll fill up the rest of my, I'll like finish my term. Yeah, we might not see him. Or, But people have been know. saying for a long time that Biden, that the real Biden isn't even real Biden. Have you seen the pictures of his lobes? That he's like Eminem clone mm -hmm. shit. Well, if you look at his, like even close up on his lobes, like. His, for his first, like, 50 years, his lobes were closed, and then now the new one has, like, a, a, a whole, you know, some people have that cut, the slit underneath. There's, like, little conspiracies that are, like, that's not even the Biden. The, I think, I don't know. Sometimes I wonder if that's the internet just being the internet. Of course. Conspiracies are the, the new internet, currency. It's just, like, a, a fucking uh, person. Hot bed of speculation. A, a fucking significant other that's just hyper fucking focused on stupid shit, mm. you know? Like, oh, their ear changed. Like, did it? I don't know. Maybe they are a fucking clone. I don't mm -hmm. know. Yeah. I don't, and I'm not saying that it's not real because I... Who knows? Personally, I would say that that shit is real. It's somewhere along the line, but am I going to fucking look into it and look into shit like that? I don't have time. Yeah. That's a waste of my time. Yeah. If I get if I get crazy famous and big enough, maybe I'll meet one guy that says he's a fucking clone. I don't know. Yeah, I've been <laughs> seeing people forever say they were actually cloned. Really? Yeah. They cloned sheep in like the 80s. Yeah. yeah, but either way, like Biden, it doesn't surprise me that gap, gap shortened because the dude's fucking literally like falling down on stage, shit in his pants. They like supposedly they have a they have a I don't know how true this is, but they have a team that's like there to literally change his pants. Yeah, like what the fuck, dude? Yeah. This is our president. Our like what? Yeah, you know. So and with all this happening too around the same time, like Trump having the assassination attempt, Biden stepping down. I don't know. What's yeah. this mean? Yeah, I don't know, dude. What's this mean? Dude? I don't know, man. We're I, I, we're in a the most interesting movie in the fucking world Bro, right now. Bro, you couldn't have written this shit better. Like since 2012, 2016, it feels like we've just been on this fucking roller coaster, dude. And to me, it's the 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 untethering of a nation. Yeah, it literally is the untethering of a nation. And people are looking at the wrong things. You know, these are. The, uh, two wings of the same bird. I think that's Fletch said that the other day or a couple weeks ago, you know, and they are. People are looking at the total wrong things, but it is an untethering of the entirety of what we, the, the world we live in is fucking changing before our eyes and it's only going to start to happen faster, especially as things with the ec economy start to fucking break down more and more and more and the whole world just fucking starts to fill it. This is going to be a global shift. Yeah, yeah. And I love that shit. I know people don't really look into it or talk about it or think about it the same way, but um, like what's happening with all this, with the political stuff, it just ties into all that yeah. insanity. Yeah. Chaos, dude. You got to get chaos to get change. You know, chaos is like, it's the stirring pot. It's like stirring the gumbo, dude. It brings change. Yeah. And it made me think, I thought I was thinking about this dynamic the other day, like there's some people that are just waiting in the background, wait, wanting this whole thing to burn. Like the Joker, waiting for this whole thing to burn. And it makes sense in a way that, like, a peon, I'll say that with air quotes, would want that because if you are the, if you're, in, if you're the Ooh. forest. Sorry, that kid f slipped right on his ass. Sorry. Oh, no one saw I, I see him laying. He slipped right he off of like that thing, bro. He went right on his tailbone, dude. He looks like he's hurting pretty He good. hurt himself for sure. Here comes the tears. Oh, man. Here comes the fucking brigade, bro. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Go ahead. What were you saying? Oh, you're all right. He definitely felt it. Dude. Even as a kid, he's like, "God, he's rubbing his ass." <laughs> I wish I could have got that on camera, and then talked about it. Go ahead, though. What were you saying? But okay, so the idea of like 
with the political spectrum and the world around us like there's some people out in the world that are just like excited by that chaos and watching it all just fall apart because they have nothing in the mm. world you know what i mean and i was thinking about it in terms of like if you're in like a crazy dense thick forest like the amazon the littlest plant would or the, a seed would hope everything would burn so that it could plant and grow roots and, and spring up, mm -hmm. you know, so it could essentially have room to grow. And that's what it would create is a void room for opportunity. Yeah. When things are so broken, sometimes the, the only way to fucking redesign something better is like, let it burn, burn itself to the ground and then recreate from a lot smaller foundation than one that's already so massive. You can't, you can't make changes into something that's purposely set to fuck everybody. Like you have to literally let it just melt. You got to let the thing fucking melt down and make something better from scratch, something new with better intentions. Cause it's hard to re it's like they say with laws, like once it's in place, it's a lot harder to, to reverse a law than it is to get one in. You know what I mean? Once it's set in, it's fucking tough. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and it's natural process to let things burn to let the forest have a, a it burned through and then regrowth well there's a lot of friction too and like the world wants this change so bad and it's been running up against itself so hard that the momentum is just pushing been pushing so long like it's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and this thing's just fucking crumbling slowly and from it's hard to tell because unless you're on a person-to-person -person basis you only see it with the people around you but Almost everybody wants something good for everybody. Like 90% of the world, 95% of the world wants beautiful, good things that are harmonious. But there's like a big system set into place that's like holding that back, you know. So it doesn't take that much for this thing to fucking fall apart. You no, know? it doesn't. But also, too, that system plays on like everyone does want those things, but everyone also wants those things for themselves. And almost first, like there's like a part of people that wants to make sure that they're stable or yeah that everything's good and taken care of yeah meaning bills are paid like you know and they're good and they there's a the thought and the the feelings that reside within like the human spirit of like i got to make sure i'm good and then i can help other people but the way the fucking world functions around us you most people never reach that point it yeah. keeps them running on a hamster wheel and they never can help people and then they get drowned well and people ha are very resistant to change in general like the one, most people will do anything to not change. You know, they're just trying so hard to just keep what they do have and not fucking grow on an internal individual basis and on a large scale. Like that chaos is scary to people. You know, yeah. Like not everybody thrives in those situations, but and it takes those rev revelationary, what was it? Those revelation type moments that we were talking about earlier. Yeah, to almost kick yeah, people out. You know, the weather. Like, in one moment, they're like, oh no i can and boom make a change yeah do you that there leave their husband mm. leave their wife quit their job start a business mm. that reminded me i saw a thing on ted dude they got a little pill now that's you know like when they do like endoscopies and shit i don't i think i pronounced that wrong but like when they have to oh do this crazy thing all through your throat down into your stomach and they can only get so far down in to see what's in your intestines to look and see if you got cancers and stuff they turn they got this little pill that's like this big now you just pop that sucker swallow it you pass it through your system and they it's powered by water so in it while the while it's inside your system it can move around it's a little camera and it can see everything all the way through your stomach all the way through your intestines and they can look and see what's going on inside your body now it's just this tiny pill when you see the beginning of what it was they're like 10 years ago they wanted to do this but the pill was this big you know and as technologies got better they got smaller 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 and finally on stage they show that they show you how to do it they take the pill and the guy controls it like a little remote control basically all through your body and it records they, they can move anywhere they want in your system how long does it take to go through the system uh, probably i don't know if, if i was going to guess it depends on how healthy you are but like fruit passes in like three hours, so I bet it passes in a couple of days. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, they probably have you fast and shit, or do it take like yeah stuff to get everything out of your gut. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how long, but yeah, wow, it, dude. it's pretty amazing. I was like, damn, they showed it on stage. It was really cool to well, watch. It's fun dude. to watch. Science. It's got a little light on it because it's dark inside. You know, like it's crazy. No way. <laughs> I mean, it's fun to watch science progress. Yeah. Dude. 
in our lifetime, just like boop, 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 yeah. boop, 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 yeah. And we're doing it faster and faster. Like I bet dudes in the 1800s were like, oh, look at this. But it's also one of those things I think about where I'm like, look at everything they had. Yeah. And they fucking put it away, like yeah. black shelved it because they yeah, that's control, true. you know, like we could have been so much farther. Like so sound healing, faster. sound healing technology. No, dude, I was watching babies. So just to get here, the the bowls, yeah. all these crying babies, these dudes in east, the eastern part of the world would hit the fucking bowl and the baby would shut up. Yeah, I saw that. Um, fuck. It. What would I say right before that? Sound healing. Shit. Oh, sound healing. Like not just sound healing from bowls. I'm talking about frequency vibration that they can put your body in that is proven to demolish cancer cells. You just stand in it and the frequency is sound and it goes through your body and where you target it, it will destroy cancer. And this works for everything and you don't have to take a drug because all drugs have side effects. This is sound. This is a vibratory frequency that cancer can't live in and it spreads it apart. It's uh, incredibly effective, like compared to 4% with chemotherapy. This is like 90% effective, dude. Well, and also to, to the converse of that, how it can destroy the cancer, it can probably create or heal, like actually do the opposite Yeah. for like, maybe if you blew your disc out, maybe it could heal it. Yeah, possibly. You know what I'm saying? Possibly, yeah. Um, what were we talking about? About the you were just saying something. How do we end up in the sound part? The bowls. No, as before that, it doesn't matter. We're just talking about a bigger, a big idea. But oh, like um, how fucking black black shelf. Idea. Yeah, it was something along there. I lost my train of thought. And, right there. Uh, how much farther we could be? Yeah. And um, oh, thank you. Uh, I, I saw you know Ray Kurzweil, the guy that lucid dreams oh, to yes. find answers. Wait, no. So he's, he's like a rich guy, right? Ray Kurzweil is like a scientist, like the world, like, I don't know, futurology. He's created a bunch of beautiful things for the world that are like very healing things. He uses lucid dreaming to go back to find answers for inventions he wants. And he's been, he said at least five of these inventions he's made. Research. He uses lucid dreaming to, to find inventions. Like he'll go into lucid dreaming and back engineer problems and find answers to how to invent things he's got like five massive inventions he was betting he was recently he's like if you can live if you can make it through five years of life he's like i really believe you can live to be four or five hundred in the next five years and this guy's invented a lot of stuff he back engineers stuff he like he's like okay let's start with the solution to whatever the problem is and then find out what are the steps that would be needed going backwards to actually get this done and so he like back engineers his way through it ray kurzweil has been on joe rogan he's actually a the people that watched the thing, the biggest thing that came out of his interview was like, that motherfucker's wearing a toupee. <laughs> he was, dude, doing this terrible toupee. But uh, yeah, interesting guy. Um, I, I do like the idea, though, that he was like, he uses lucid dreaming to do that kind of stuff because in dream space, you can find a lot more than you can. And well, this is the same thing that happened with Terrence Howard. Uh, yeah. He said he found it all through a man. I know that guy, that scientist called him out. He's all, everybody wants to blame come up with this reason of how they found these things you know who knows i don't know what's true you should watch that damn podcast so we can talk about it okay i want to talk about it but we kind of I, missed the the boom in the moment because i didn't watch Did it, you watch yeah. it it's all it's Dude, all good i have what's called a life uh-huh and i live that thing uh-huh every fucking moment just like right now and right now uh-huh so i'm sorry i haven't seen it yet and right now and right then mm-hmm no, that's all good. Um, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sorry I haven't seen it, but I'll watch it and we'll talk about it. I can't wait for fucking football season, bro. <sighs> September 4th, dog. <laughs> Football's I was, cool, but... I was just watching uh, Andy Andy Reid from the yeah. from the Kansas City Chiefs. Yeah, they were asked because he'll he'll take plays from anybody. Anybody? I that... saw I saw this. They said to take it from a janitor. Yeah, yeah. Way to hit the punchline. Um... <laughs> But it is crazy, bro. He was, I was set, trying to set it up and lead to that point. But he he will take place from freaking anybody. He's He said he's taken place from random people all over. And some janitor was telling him at when he was at Green Bay, like, I have a play for you. You got to try it. And he's like, whatever, whatever. Just ignored him. And then one day the guy bugged him like every week. He's like, fine, show me the play. And he wrote it down for me. He's all, that's actually really good. They, he used that play when he was in Green Bay, and they scored a touchdown on it. And the janitor was telling his wife, they scored. That's my play. And she's like, bullshit. <laughs> it was kind of crazy, dude. I know. I know. Yeah. I saw it. Yeah. I saw it. I love that shit. But I, I can't, to take I can't shit. wait for football, dude. I'm so excited. It's like my favorite time of the year. You can't. 
for me, it's the most exciting. Once a week, you get, to, well, a lot of, they're doing Friday games this year. Peacock, fucking, they're all over streaming platforms now. So I have Monday games? Monday. Wednesday? Thursday. Monday, Thursday, Friday, Sunday. Now they're at Friday, Monday, when, Saturday, Monday, sometimes Thursday, too. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Yeah, five days a week football. Yeah, Holy baby. Shit. Remember when Carly's going to hate remember hearing it was that? Just, uh, <laughs> remember when it was just Sundays and Mondays? Uh, yeah, yeah, I do, dude. I do. I, I'm just fucking so excited, bro. So many good players. So much. Do you know how many wives are going to fucking leave their husbands this year? Yeah, yeah, every year, dude. Football. Nice I wonder. Break. I wonder what the divorce rate does in football season. Sports a nice break. Sports is a nice break from the world relentlessness of fucking society. Everything sometimes, we were man. just talking about. Yeah, it's like video games. Football is a lot like video games. It's, it's great. Just like a it's, way to check out a little bit and just yeah. just relax. It's gladiator shit, dude. It gets that. It gets that energy out for humanity. Yeah. You realize how big sports was in COVID. Because when you lost that, you're like, wow, we need this yeah. as a nation. We actually like there there this actually does provide a certain level of value for humanity. Yeah. For us to like get that energy out and also to decompress, come together, relax, enjoy things as, as a group. What's the guy's name we met at Boise State? We Gives shook people his hand. just a reason to come together. What's the guy's name we shook his hand? Um it's not Michael Eric Dyson. Oh no, that's um, the dude with the glasses. Cornell yes, West. Cornell West. Thank you. He made a good point. He's like, sports is like one of the first places where the playing ground is always even. Let's take out uh, shitty refs that are being paid, but like, it's a place where like the foundation is like the best players, the best situations. They work. Like it doesn't matter white, black, gay, straight. Like if you're good. And, and you're like, you can get on that field. Like it's this even playing ground where like the outcome is, di is like, depends upon the quality and there's no manipulations and shit. Like I know in sports, there's a little manipulation, but the idea of it is very pure. If there's not though. It's, it's yeah. But I'm just like, talk about the idea of sports, you know, like yes. it's where that kind of exists. Like hip hop supposed to be the same way too, but record labels kind of fuck that up. But you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's a place where the best, the best of the best make it. Uh, obvious that that's what they are the cream will rise to the top. yes dude and i love that about sports it's it's kind of dumb like and even people are so disinterested in life a lot of times they're bored disinterested they hate what they're doing but in sports they're interested it, they're they, they jump on their team's bandwagon and it's that's stupid in a way but also it's cool to get just care about something they're excited yeah to be a just be to look forward to something i love that idea that excited people need that excitement yeah they need something to get excited about yeah you know yeah. And then when you can provide that for a person, that's actually a beautiful thing. It really is, man. And to be able to have that um, that honor is something you should always respect yeah. as an entertainer in whatever avenue you are in, whether it's sports, music, yeah, art, whatever. Yeah. What did you think on that note of uh, Jake Paul putting a whooping on Mike Perry? I'm fucking sick of watching Jake Paul fucking beat people up, dude. I'm, <laughs> I'm serious, dude. I'm so fucking sick of it. <laughs> He's got. He's good. He's not bad, dude. But and Mike Perry is clearly the box, the champ of fucking bare the knuckles. But he's not the boxing champ, you know. Like, just like I told you, I want to see Jake Paul fight a guy his size that's actually a boxer that's good. Then fucking find out what happens. The only boxer he fought, he got beat up by. That's what I'm saying. Like, let's fight a real boxer at your size. Yeah, that's what I what, what we should watch because then we'll get a gauge on how good you actually are. Instead of fighting fucking Mike Perry and Mike Tyson and fucking God know whoever the fuck else. What was the other dude he knocked out? Ben Askren. Yeah, Ben Askren. Tyron Woodley. Woodley. Anderson Silva. Anderson Silva. Nate Diaz. Nate, that's what I was thinking, Nate Diaz. Uh, All these if, dudes, dude. You're fucking fighting outside the box making great money. Yes, but I'm sick of watching it because you fucking keep winning against these dudes that are fighting different fucking shit. You're not fighting them in an MMA. You know, it's like, God damn it, bro. Go fight someone that, in the same regimen as you. Yeah. If you let me put it to ask you this. If I if I was Jake Paul and you were my brother, where would you tell me to go? If like if it was just me, would you keep telling me to keep fighting the people I could keep making money and beat? Or would you be like, go fight a real boxer? If you yeah, were just think yeah, of it, if it was you. Thing, and that's the thing, too. Like um, this is that everything I'm saying is me being biased and being like, like what we're seeing is a real, a, a real showcase of 
true talent in in the sport. And it's annoying to watch. But all but to answer your question, I would do exactly what he's doing. What he's fucking doing, dude. If I was Logan, I'd be like, keep doing what you're doing. Make keep it, making make, that money. Make good money, dude. You're fucking super famous. You don't there's no there's no actual like unless Jake Paul has it in his heart to become a fucking world champion boxer at whatever weight heavyweight or whatever the fucking weight class, then just keep doing what you're doing, bro, because it's bringing you a lot of attention. That's bringing you a lot of money and a lot of good things. And all, he's not—he doesn't seem to be as big of a douchebag as he used to be either. Yeah, uh, I, th- I get a more of a slimy, sports has a way of doing that. I get that. more of a slimy vibe from fucking Logan. Yeah, in general. Me too. But um, and I used to get that more from Jake. Yeah, but whatever. Um, he—I would say to keep. Yeah, exactly right. I, I know saying. that's what I was thinking. Just keep about. fucking doing what you do, man. You're making good money, and you've got, you've got a lot of attention coming your way. Your fights are going to sell. We we moved the show for the Tyson fight because we thought it was gonna be on the same date as our show. It's gonna we're be like, the biggest fight ever. Yeah, dude. we were like, "Fuck that, dude! I'm not yeah. throwing a show on the same date." On that. Netflix, everybody's watching it. Seriously, dude. So, I mean, you see who he called out? Yeah, Pierre. Alex Pierre. I don't care that beats the fucking. Brakes He'd have off. to get out of his UFC contract, but I feel like if there's ever a fighter that could get Dana to let him out of their contract, Just, it might he doesn't be like him. Jake, right? He does, he hates Jake. Do I want I, Jake, Alex Pierre would. Fucking drop him, dude. What if he knocked out Piera? Bro? But Piera used to be a kickboxer. Yeah, he knows how to box. What if he knocked out Piera? I would be so surprised. Piera's fucking big. He can get down to one eighty five, but he can walk. He walks around like two thirty. That's one thing I don't like. How, how big's Paul? That's one thing I don't like about watching Jake fight. Like when Mike Perry, there was like a forty to fifty pound difference in their weight. Jake Mike Mike Perry fights one seventy. He walked in there at one at two twenty two. He that what Jake like, did. Jake did. He weighed in at two hundred, but put twenty two pounds back on. So like, how the, did they put that much weight on that fast? Ah, dude, he been he he cut apparently cut like thirty eight pounds in like uh three or four weeks. So he cut a lot of weight to get down to that. I to lost fight seven pounds in fucking four days. There. I've watched Wade. Oh God, you need to go. We got to go right now. You got to right. you got to take me up there. Freedom Renegade Radio Podcast fourteen. Sorry guys, Chris has an appointment. Uh, we love you guys. Gotta, Peace, love you. Be safe. Have fun. Therapy guys.